Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you today. I have some fun projects in the pipeline that require some pretty serious compute power, so I decided to build a new workstation. In this video, I'll walk you through how I built this deep learning beast, I'll talk about some of the parts that I use, and generally my experience building a computer. This is only the second PC that I've ever built, so please take it easy on me. Hopefully, I still will do better than The Verge. So I do have this weird habit of naming inanimate objects. I've named my plants, I've named my golf clubs, I even named my last computer. I called it Mjolnir after Thor's hammer. I think it would be incredible if you guys actually named this new computer that I'm building. Please let me know what you think I should call this computer in the comments section below. Whichever name that I like the most will win a fun prize from NVIDIA. I'll talk more about what the prize is and about the projects that I have coming up in the pipeline at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Also, special thanks to NVIDIA for supporting this channel and making giveaways like this possible. Before I start building, I want to make it clear that you don't need a crazy powerful computer to do data science. You can do almost everything that you need via the cloud. To learn more about this, I've linked the video that I made on the best computer for data science above and below. Okay, the moment that you've all been waiting for. Let's get into some of the parts. I built this computer around the GPU, so we'll start there. NVIDIA was nice enough to send over one of their Titan RTX graphics cards for me to test out on my upcoming experiments. To date, the Titan is the fastest PC graphics card ever built. It has 576 Turing tensor cores, which provide incredible efficiencies for training deep learning models. It also has 24 gigabytes of total video memory, which should be more than enough for any of the projects that I planned. Realistically, I don't know enough about the other technical details to talk intelligently about them, but I'll link to them in the description if you're interested in learning more. You likely won't need this much computing power on your own, but it's really nice to know that it's available for consumer use. I've also heard rumblings about NVIDIA releasing a new series later this year, and I'm really excited about what those could entail as well. Still, this card should prove more than enough compute power for my needs. Now let's move on to the CPU. I went with the Ryzen 9 3900X for this build. The 3900X has 12 CPU cores and up to 24 threads. It has a base clock speed of 3.8 GHz and it can be overclocked to 4.6. I'm currently not planning on overclocking this at all. It won't really have much of an impact if I overclock the CPU on deep learning, so I'll probably leave it as is. I've used a Ryzen chipset in the past and I really liked it. I thought it was a bit more bang for your buck than any of the Intel chips. That's why I'm going with this. I, again, this isn't my area of expertise, so take that with a grain of salt. In terms of compatibility with the GPU and the price, this seemed like the best option for me. I didn't see a need for an overly powerful CPU in a deep learning machine, but I still wanted to maximize what I could do with the Titan graphics card. I went with this over the Ryzen 7 or the Ryzen 5 for that reason. If I went all out with one of the Threadripper cards, it would be more than double the price of the CPU, and the motherboard would also inflate in price as well. So I didn't think that that made a ton of sense for me. Speaking of the motherboard, I went with the X570 Aorus Ultra from Gigabyte. I went with this mainly because I had a Gigabyte motherboard in the past, I had a pretty good experience with it. This is also one of the only ones that I could find that was compatible with the CPU and the GPU. This choice was mainly about availability. It wasn't that there aren't motherboards that are compatible out there, it was that I couldn't find them on Amazon or Newegg, this was one of the main ones I could. As it stands now, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM in the computer. At a minimum, you should generally have as much RAM as your graphics card has video memory. So I'd need at least 24 gigabytes for this build. Recommended RAM is at least double that of the GPU memory, so I actually should have at least 48, and I have another 32 gigabytes coming in the mail so I can meet that uh, recommended setting. I use the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM that's clocked at 3200 MHz. I don't think an incremental increase in RAM speed here would have a dramatic impact on the performance of any of the projects I have planned. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know also in the comment section below. Next is the solid state drive. In the last video I made, I mistakenly called it a steady state drive, and I wanted to correct that and apologize. For this build, I went with a 1TB M2 drive from Samsung. I didn't put much thought into this decision, it seemed like the best value option for the use cases that I had planned. Now for the case, I went with this white Leon Lee mid-tower. I really like the aesthetics of the case, 
but I did run into a little problem with it, which you'll see in a little bit. I've linked all the parts below in the description if you want to go in and check out the specs. Okay, for the big reveal, I went with a white and black theme for this build. I don't like too much RGB throw up everywhere, so I figured this was reasonable. I also didn't feel the need to upgrade the CPU cooler, and I'm not planning to overclock anything in this case, so the Wraith Prism that comes with the Ryzen 9 should be perfectly fine. I think that I did a decent job with cable management, and honestly this was a major issue in the last computer that I built. I also think that I got the fans facing the correct direction. I have some that are intake and some that are outtake, and after watching quite a few build videos from Bitwit and Linus Tech Tips, I hope I didn't mess this part up. Yes, I realize that my CPU cooling fan is upside down. I got it on and it was really hard for me to get on, so I'm just not going to do it again. There were definitely some hiccups along the way. I actually broke the side panel of the case, as I'd mentioned before, and I just got a new one today, so I'm really excited about that. I also had some problems with the motherboard reading all the memory, even though it was in the correct slots. Oh, memory error. So the team at Amazon who I reached out to for customer support was actually really helpful there as well. I plan to do a lot more benchmarking later, but I thought a fun way to test this initially would be to compare some of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis on one computer versus another. One thing that I'm constantly relying heavily on the GPU for is video rendering. Let's compare the rendering of the same video on this new computer versus my old laptop. As you can see in this task, it'll greatly help my workflow. This is just a preliminary benchmark based on my own tools, and I'll be making some future videos that benchmark this computer on deep learning tasks and other relevant data science tasks as well. Okay, now what am I going to use this new deep learning beast for? I'm becoming a Twitch streamer. Okay, I'm kidding. Aside from the video rendering, I'm actually planning to do quite a bit more image and video classification in the future. I'd also like to experiment with some reinforcement learning, and NVIDIA has a very cool API called Rapids that allows us to use the GPU for a lot of the things that we use the CPU for with Pandas. In the spirit of building a new computer, I thought it would be great to actually give away a computer as well. I've worked with NVIDIA to give away one of their Jetson Nano developer kits. I talk about the importance of data science projects all the time, and some of the most unique types of projects are related to distributed devices. The Jetson Nano enables the development of millions of new, small, low-powered AI systems. You can start building your own Internet of Things applications with projects on network video recorders, home robots, and intelligent gateways. I've linked to a video on how the Nano works above and below, and I can't express how thankful I am to you guys, as well as NVIDIA, for making videos and giveaways like this possible. I had a tremendous amount of fun making this video, and hopefully this new computer will allow me to produce even more interesting content going forward. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck on your data science journey.